Oh, hello. Ooh, nice and cold. Good morning and welcome to another episode of the Performance Cafe. I really don't want to put out this cup of coffee. I'm really chilly this morning. So um, today I'd like to expand a little bit on something we started talking about last week. And that was how people's personalities played into how they experience and um, take accountability. So I did a I, I did a talk and I showed how different profiles in the Enneagram would relate different to accountability and how they get feedback and you know how they how they're held accountable, that kind of thing. And a lot of people said, well, that's fine, but actually all you've opened up is a can of worms because you've showed us that um, we need to, you know, we need to adjust for everyone, but how do we do that? And without having to go into too much depth about the Enneagram, I'd have probably have to spend the next couple of months there. Uh, I thought what I'd do is I'd step over to my next favorite coaching tool, and that is strengths. And uh, what we've got, what we're talking about today, is how we go about um, how we go about uh, integrating strengths and accountability. Because so I'm a strengths coach. So we do for you guys that don't know it. It's a strengths profile. Um, it's it's the Clifton strengths. It gives us strengths from most preferred to least preferred there's a selection of 34 everyone gets measured against the same 34 strengths um, and the strengths really those 34 strengths in and of themselves are a strength theme they're not just a strength so even if i say the word like communication it's not just one meaning there's a whole it's a theme and it encapsulates a whole bunch of other stuff beneath it so we can go really nice and deep when we do strengths coaching so today we want to take a look at what happens when we, um, you know, how do we how do we use these strengths? Because even an Enneagram profile, those people also have strengths. So they don't need a strength finder or what we now call Clifton strengths to understand their strengths. They will, by virtue of the fact that they are who they are, they will have strengths. So often the names of these things are, are, are a bit of a giveaway. So number two, as we like to call them, is the helper. So they like helping people. There's a strength in their people. Go and find it and use it. Um, number seven, like me, is the enthusiastic visionary. Positive people like dreaming about big things to come. Use that. That's their strength. So everyone has their strength. But I thought today we would go over and take a look at um, what we do when we are using strengths per se. So how do we factor strengths into accountability? much more granular discussion today. So the first thing I think we need to stop and take a look at is accountability. What do we mean by accountability? Now, you will know that I don't have the best view of the word accountability because it means holding people accountable. And actually, I prefer when people show ownership where they take that accountability for themselves. So accountability is extrinsic, ownership is intrinsic. So I'm going to carry on working with the word accountability, but um, it's really about how do we own. Now, one of the things around how do we own is that as managers, we walk in and assume that people are going to take accountability because I said so, it's part of your job description, I pay you to do this, right? And sometimes people, even with the best will in the world, don't want to take that accountability not because they're being impossible or negligent or whatever the case may be, but actually they might not understand it from a strengths perspective. And I'll give you a good example. And please, my, my, my apologies to anyone who has harmony. Um, it's my lowest strength and it's a beautiful strength, but I want to show you how it shows up for me. Because harmony is my lowest strength and a whole bunch of my other strengths are around thinking and new ideas and challenging perceptions, what happens is the moment someone says to me, we must be in harmony, my inner child goes, well, if we're all going to be in harmony and we're all going to agree to everything, then when are we going to do new stuff? And new stuff is so important to me, right? I like to innovate. I like to read what's going on, what's going to happen. Where do we think the AI is going to go? Will the robots end up taking over the world? And so from that perspective, it's so important to understand what, I want to say, triggers people, 
but I used to have a boss that used to say, what turns people on? And I actually prefer that context a little bit more from the perspective of what lights that inner fire. So here we've got accountability coming along. There's a thing that needs doing. And what we need to understand is that if we understand where strengths are coming from, where Clifton Strengths is coming from, we understand that certain people have certain preferences. And if we speak to them in those preferences, we are actually going to do better. We're going to help them. We're going to set them, set, set, set themselves up for success. And we're going to do better because they're going to just get it and they're going to want to do it. In uh, I have a public speaking talk that I do. Uh, and my talk is called, um, thank God it's Monday. Uh, three ways to take Mondays from manic to magic. And in that, I use the example of when I was little, we loved playing cars. And so we would have these little box cars, those little die cast cars, I think you call them, and you go, nah. and then you get to a point and you'd have to stand up and walk and go, nah. and you get up and you catch up, and so it would go on. But this darn little car would only go as far as you would push it. It was a lot of work. I mean, a five-year-old, have you seen how exhausted kids are when they go to bed? It's because die-cast cars can't go on their own. So what we aim to achieve in this particular case is we try and see with our little die-cast car, can we rather make it something that is, I don't know if you know the technology, but the little friction cars. You press down, you pull back, and when you let go, it just zooms off. And so what happens in that case is I think that's what we want for employees, for team members. Heck, we want that for ourselves, don't we? Something that will energize you, something that will keep you going, something that you want to do, you want to see the outcome, you want to take that ownership and actually be the person that's going to make this work. And so what happens is that when we work with Clifton Strengths, we understand what is that point where we push and pull back so that people just go. But more importantly, when we do Clifton Strengths with other people, that means we have their profiles. It means that we can help them create the self-awareness of what works for me. So when we take a look at this, we're going to do things like, for example, do the profile and then we do a debriefing. And we will say something like, Okay, I'm, I'm going to pick on myself again for want of a better example. Plus, and I'm, I don't put anyone else to shame. One of my one of my strengths is communication, which is why we're pretty much where we are today, right? Me talking over a mic, no problem with public speaking, no problem speaking in front of people. I love it. So along comes COVID, and I'm stuck at home alone with my two dogs. Thankfully, I had my two dogs with me. And everyone's off baking banana bread. Remember how we did, we thought in South Africa, we thought it was going to be only three weeks of lockdown. So we all went and bought, well, most people went and bought ingredients for banana bread. I'm gluten intolerant, so I didn't. And what happened was everyone found that thing that was going to keep them going for the next three weeks. And that thing actually landed up having to carry us all for months, I'm sure, across the globe because it lasted so long for everyone. So... What happened for me was, with my strengths communication, being literally cut off from the world for most of the day, well, it's kind of okay because there's other strengths that like to think deeply, read research, but at a point, this communication thing must happen. So instead of baking banana bread, I started Performance Cafe. Performance Cafe was supposed to be 21 days of 10 minutes a day insight to give me an opportunity to use my strength. And that kept me sane. Well, as you might notice, it is now 2023 and we are still here weekly uh, for most weeks unless I get ill. And uh, so here we are. And the strength actually saved my sanity. And so is also not only part of how do I take accountability, but my well-being. But if you think about it, accountability and well-being also go hand in hand because my well-being supports my accountability. So let me give you a couple of ideas um, how Clifton Strengths would work. Um, so, for example, we could promote accountability on a level of personal development. If I know what turns me on, like I did with communication, it's so much easier for me to just keep going at it. 
However, we also have other places. So, for example, in leadership, if I know what turns me on as a leader and what turns me off, so what triggers me, I understand how to work with someone who has the type of strengths that may trigger me because that happens. There's diversity and we have to take it all into account and bring it all into play. So we can't go, well, it doesn't suit me that someone has harmony in my case. What I go is that person has harmony. They have a superpower I don't have. How am I going to help them use their harmony? Or how am I going to ask them to support me with their harmony? But now I'm sure you've got the next step already in that, what about teamwork? What if we do what we call a team dynamic session where we take a look at where do we overlap in strengths? Where do we have opposite strengths? So that we know who's the best person for the job, where there are strengths, when they, you know, where we have the strengths detail. The other thing that we have is how do we know when there is need for collaboration so that we can put two strings together to get the most, the best, <laughs> to get the most and the best. Goodness. What is in this coffee? I'm going to have another swallow because it's so good. Mm. I better not boast and mess again because that's going to be terrible. Um, so that we can get the best of that collaboration, right? The superpowers from that collaboration. So... Again, I just want to emphasize everyone can be measured on these strengths. Everyone has these strengths. It has been tested in, I don't know, I think 35 million people across the world have completed it. So very often when we sit with people with limiting beliefs, they go, I can't. Well, actually strengths proves you can. Because you see with strengths, there's no best profile for job A, B or C. You've got a profile. How do you apply yourself best to what you have to do? And it's even useful for sometimes getting around those things that we really don't enjoy doing um, if we can find a little bit of motivation from our strengths. Right. So let's take a look at how do accountability and strengths come together. So I've given you an example of my communication and how it gave me that ability to push through. So it gave me the tenacity but it also gave me the starting point because if I wasn't excited about communication, if I wasn't excited about learning and researching and getting, the, getting knowledge and then sharing it with people to see what they do with it, I would never have started. So if you think about it, when we talk about ownership, I love talking cars. Um, no, no, no awards for guessing that I, I enjoy a beautiful car. So when I go and take a look at a car, I take a look at, Yes, things like performance, but what does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? You know, it's like I involve it with all my senses. And I like to think that when we do strengths things, we do the same. When we manage people for their strengths, we involve all of their senses and we engage them in a dream or in a goal, okay, because we want to make it a reality, in a goal that they really can get to grips with. And that is why when we use their strengths language, we get so much further with them. Not just with the tenacity of keep going, but the excitement to want to get going. Uh, I read an interesting, now I'm going off, off piece here, but I have to tell you this quickly. Um, I'm mean, going to have to say for another because I can't remember, but I've, I, I've been reading work by Jim Quick. And... Um, he said there are three things. There are three things that people must do um, to perform well in work. And the last one was enthusiasm. I'll do another talk about it. But he said enthusiasm. And I thought, I wonder how many leaders go, I want people to be enthusiastic about what they do. I want people to want to do it. And as many of you have, would have heard if I've spoken to um uh, spoken to about strengths. The good thing about strengths is because we're using strengths that people already have, firstly, it's easier for them to learn uh, what they have to do. It's easier for them to execute. It is less stressful for them and you get a better product. Now, that's the kind of thing that makes me enthusiastic. It's when I have to do something that I really love doing, that I want to see, and that I know when I've done it, I'm going to get this deep sense of fulfillment. And, and I just want to highlight that strength does 
enable people to bring their best self to the game because they can commit and they know they can do it. But I never want you to think that because people are working to their strengths, there's never room to grow. We just grow them within their strengths. So, for example, uh, there was a the, the, the research started, I think, in the 1940s, but um, it's been done often again where a bunch of students were given a speed reading course. First thing was test, and there were slow readers and fast readers, and they all were put on the same reading course, the speed reading course. What happens is that we would assume those who can read really fast you know, they're really doing it well. So there's probably little movement. And those who, who were doing it badly, well, they'd shoot up because, you know, they now got all these skills. The exact opposite happened. Those who could read fast up to four times improved their speed. Those who battled to read fast made only minor gains in comparison. Why? Because if I build on a strength, on someone that's or something someone's already good at doing, it just works better. And this is a highlight and a note to all training managers. That remember this when it comes to your training budget. If you want to cut costs and get the best return on investment, use people's strengths in order to leverage further learning uh, so that you can get better return on investment. <clears throat> so I think that I've really made the point here around accountability and how strengths help us keep others accountable and ourselves, because that's something to remember as well, is that we can also turn this on ourselves, as, as my one friend, friend says, is that we can take our strengths and we can see how do we use them to keep us accountable as well. I think the important thing, yeah, and just a last couple of takeaways um, around using strengths for accountability is number one, I want to emphasize the self-awareness, the necessity of self-awareness for the accountability process. I think we have too many people who aim and they don't aim too high. They aim too diverse. They aim out of, they, they aim out of scope, right? They can always aim high and aim higher. I'm happy with that. But let's keep them self-aware and help them understand what they're good at and what's best, which muscles are best to flex, right? Um, in, when, we do the, when we do the Clifton strengths, you, get, you have 34 strengths, but actually it's such an intuitive system because we use the top five or 10 to really understand what our strengths are and how we can apply them to accountability. And that's why it also works so well in teams is because if we share what our strengths are, we understand how to relate to each other and hold each other accountable as peers as well. Right, and then I've told you many ways that specific strengths can contribute to accountability. Um, I'll give you one or two more. So Achiever loves drive and productivity, um, and they also like to tick off on, by the way, if you, give an, if you want Achiever to do their work, give them a checklist. They love ticking things off. Um, and they love keep, you know, using these things to achieve a goal, to track progress. How do we use that in accountability? Um, uh, focus, concentrating on priorities and avoiding distractions, um, that enhances accountability. And remember, everyone will have some of these strengths. So there's always a way around to tweak uh, someone's strengths and help them tweak it. Even more important, let them do the tweaking to make sure that they maintain uh, accountability. And uh, I think, I hope I've brought it together. I hope I've brought together accountability for you strengths and how they go hand in hand and how not only does do strengths improve accountability improve accountability but they actually maximize it because of the energy and the removal of stress and concerns in getting stuff done so i would love you to reflect on your own strengths and see how you can apply those to accountability and if you can't do an assessment just think, what is it that turns you on and how can you leverage that to improve work productivity, family engagements, all of that kind of stuff. So I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, stream. Uh, I think I might be doing a little bit more on strengths for teams next week. I'll see. I'll let you know. Uh, if you're looking for more of this, uh, we record and upload these after the fact as videos to YouTube and Facebook. 
and you can find related articles on my website, performforward.com. The live streams themselves are held on my LinkedIn every Wednesday morning at 9.30 SAST. So that is GMT minus two. And of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for topics, please do leave a comment on your platform of choice and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Right, until next Wednesday, I'm going to get back to this cup of coffee and I'll see you next Wednesday at the Performance Cafe.